Hi everybody, it's Sam and Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. It's Wednesday, so that means it's a hobby base monthly kit tutorial. And this one is a really cool loaded gift tag. And I've called it my loaded gift tag because it is loaded. And it's got all kinds of little bits and pieces going on. So this is actually a shaker. Of course it would be a shaker, it's my favourite thing to make. So there's little Easter eggs inside that little window. I've got heat embossing and Winker Stella with this um, little Easter egg here. I've got this embellishment, which is a brad. I've got this tiny little rose here, which I've dyed. I've done a fussy cut of a little chicken. And then it's got this little um, top here. And then I've put my ribbon through. And then on the back, you can just write your message. You can stamp it there as well. Once I'd stuck it down, I thought, oh, I could have stamped that. So um, yeah, you can obviously put another little sentiment there on the back but aren't they adorable? I absolutely have really thoroughly enjoyed making these. Um, I've zoomed in quite far today just so that you can see in a bit more detail because it's quite a small project, as you can see with my hand there. My hands look huge. Um, <laughs> the amount of mess I made making this gift tag. Why is it such a small little thing, yet my craft room is like a bomb has exploded and there was literally stuff everywhere because I think, because I've done heat embossing, obviously a shaker card, fussy cutting, I've done ink dyeing. So you think of all the things that we use, obviously, to do those bits and pieces. So yeah, it's a bit of a bit of a mess at the minute. So I've done most of the preparation. So again, just to keep this video as short as possible, but I'm going to go through now and show you all these things. And yeah, I just absolutely love this. It's such a Oh, love it, cute. Anyway, right. So you are going to need to die cut two pieces of white card or any color card really, depending on what theme you're doing. Um, Cause this is obviously using the supplies that were in this um, March, the March kit, which is obviously got much uh, an Easter theme about it. So although the papers, those papers aren't particularly Eastery, some of them are, which I've used in the first tutorial, was it last week's tutorial? I can't remember. Anyway, I'll share the links to those bits and pieces. But you need two pieces here. Now I've die cut these using my rectangle um, nest dies, but let me just give you the measurements. If you don't have them, you can just cut this on your trimmer. It's four and one eighth of an inch by two and three quarters, okay? So you want two pieces in a good card. So put one's gonna be on the front, one's gonna be on the back. And then on top of that, you also want to do the paper. So this was a sheet of uh, six by six that came in the pack. And I'm gonna get this one um, cut with my, so I'm just looking around amongst all this mess. And I think I put them away, yeah. So I'm just gonna run this through my machine. And I think it was that one there. Yeah, so that's the one that I use. So it's just this nest here of all these different sizes. Okay, so let me just trim off so I can get two tags from this one piece of six by six. So that's always good. I'm just going to bring in my little machine here and just get that one okay. die cut. So that one is now all cut out. Just save that bit there so I can go in my scrap drawer. Okay, um, right now we need to die cut the little window here for our um, shaker card. So if I bring it up, you can see I've got this white um, frame and then the pattern paper. And that's just by using two different um, circle dies to do so. So the largest one is going on my pattern paper, so the top piece, then the smaller one goes on your background. So first of all, do this one. So just position it where you want. You might want it in the middle, at the top, whatever. So I'm just gonna put mine kind of there, like so. Did I bring my washi tape? I think I've left it over the other side. Okay, I should be able to just hold it in place. Let me just pop this down. So yeah, get it lined up where you want. That's about right. And just run that okay, through your machine. So you'll have that. Keep this, you're gonna be using that shortly. Then with your one of the pieces of white card. Sit this perfectly over the top because they will obviously match up exact because they were cut from the same die, like so. And then I'm just gonna lightly draw around this the pencil, okay? And then with the smaller die, you wanna pop it in the middle. Again, get it nice and centered. Let me just pop it back on my plate, like so, and again, just run that through your um, diagnostic okay. machine. So again, keep that white piece as well. 
So now we've got that, we need to rub out the pencil mark. So I'll do that in a sec when I find where my rubber is. Okay, so what we can do now is stick this piece over the top like so. You're not really going to see that rubber, but yeah, the pencil you do kind of see, it's fine, I can get rid of that. So just want to stick that one on top perfectly okay, like use, so. Use my wet glue there just so I can kind of wiggle it around, make sure I'm happy with where it sits. Okay, so you can see now that's just stuck down perfectly. Flip it over and we're going to add some acetate onto the back. So, so I've got this acetate which is from the case that the bunny die came in in the kit. So if you, for those of you that watched the unboxing or maybe the first tutorial, I said keep the plastic from the packaging because it was in perfect condition and you can use this as your window sheets and to make shaker cards. So I've used it, I've cleaned it up, I just rubbed it over with a little bit of um, uh, surgical spirit just to give that a really nice shine. You can see that's perfect. So I'm just cutting a rough square here. I'll give you a measurement. You just want it to be able to sit over the top of your circle on the back there and this is two by two will be fine. Mine's two and a quarter, two and a quarter, but two by two will be okay. So, um, or maybe do two and a quarter by two and a quarter actually, because I'm just thinking by the time you run some red tape around the edges, it might, you might run the risk of it um, coming into that circle face, which you obviously you don't want. So do two and a quarter by two and a quarter, and then you know it'll be okay. And basically you just want to run some red tape just along the very outer edge of this piece of acetate like so. Okay, so just do that on all four okay, sides. And then just take off all of your backing there. On okay, your and then you just want to sit that on the back. Obviously make sure you've got nothing um, stuck to it. Although you can wipe the front when we turn it the other way around. But there you go, so now you've got that backing, you've got a nice little window there. Looks like the window of a, a boat or something, the side of a, a cruise line or a ship, so that's a good idea for any cards or anything with that kind of theme that you want to use. Okay, so now we can do the shaker. I'm just thinking, okay, so what I've done, because I think I've not gone through the measurements and everything at the beginning like I usually do just because it's, well, I just haven't. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't. Anyway, right, I have die cut one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I guess it's entirely up to you, seven of these tiny little eggs. And now these ones come from the dies that came in the kit and this says happy easter and there's this little easter egg here so i just die cut that now what i've done is to get this color is i've just used um a an ink pad a red ink pad rubbed it over my um plain white card like so and it's given me that and then i just die cut my little eggs through it okay because what i'm going to be doing and showing you later is these little flowers here i just bring them up and I've covered them with Winkostella. They have been dyed. I've dyed them that colour using my ink pads because these are what we received. So we received purple and some yellow, but that's a slightly different yellow to the yellow that we got. But I wanted to do these different coloured themes. So this one here, that, that flower there, it's got this turquoise colour. It was purple. It was this one here. Okay, so it's just showing you how, you know, sometimes you might think, oh, I wish I had it in that colour. You can change these things up. They're only paper, so they absorb pigment really, really easily. So um, just other ways to make your kind of products go further. So I wanted to have the red theme for this card, or it's like a ready pinky colour. So I have coloured this one here in the same ink that I rubbed on here. So now I know that my eggs match my flower. And then I've also stamped um, one, two, three, four, five of these Easter eggs. And these are from the stamp set that we received. So let me just grab this one here is what we received in the kit. Ooh, trying to put it so you see the back. And it's this Easter egg here at the very top right hand side. Okay, so I stamped them in the same ready pinky colour that I used. And then these little bits that have come out of these eggs are just all these bits here. And I'm using these to um, put inside my shaker. So all these little bits here that are shaking and moving around, that is how I got them. So 
you know you don't have to worry about having sequins or any other kind of you know embellishments like that you can make your own so um, you know it's it's a long-winded project I guess it's a lot of work just for that little tag but sometimes if you just have a really special gift tag you can just wrap a present really kind of plain and then it can all be about the beautiful gift tag or imagine that hanging on the side of just a plain um, gift bag you know that's just as nice so what I'm going to do so I've got all my bits to go inside my little window here so now we need to prepare um, in fact before we turn it over and put that in I want to do the little um, kind of bit here at the top so I said to keep hold of that circle okay so all you want to do is fold it in half obviously if you've got any pattern like directional pattern make sure you have it facing the right way and then all you're going to do is just cut it in half like so okay and this is going to be stuck behind that one like so and then also what I want to do is um, with this little gosh throwing things with this hole punch here I'm just gonna cut um, punch out this circle like so there we go okay and then again I'm gonna cut this just not quite in half just a little bit more than half okay you can see what I'm cutting there okay and then basically I'm gonna sit that under under over the top like so okay so I'm just going to grab a little bit of my glue here and just stick that down. Like so. Okay. And then you want to just run, just move that back a bit, there we go. And then you just want to run a very thin amount of glue along the bottom there. And then that is going to stick. Bearing in mind this is going to be sandwiched between the foam in a bit when we put together our shaker. But you just want to line that up so you get so it. Now I can flip it over there. and we can start um, doing the foam part. So I'm doing my good old trick here where you add your foam to greaseproof paper or um, wax paper. It just makes it a lot more manageable. So this was the thickness, this was my um, foam. And I went along and just stuck it down on the grease proof or whatever, uh, baking paper, and um, or wax paper, sorry. And then I've layered it up. Then I took the top um, uh, of my tape off and then I stuck it on top again. So you can see there, there is two, two layers of that foam backing. And then I've cut it with my scissors perfectly so I don't get any goo or anything on my scissors. That's why I do this. And then I've got this thin piece. And now this is perfect for me to be able to do my shake a bit. So I'm just going to take off the backing here and then I'm going to come away by about I'd say just under yeah, about one eighth of an inch. You don't want to go right up to the circle but now I can just start turning this. Don't worry if the backing on the top is starting to crinkle because once we peel it off it will be fine. And just go all the way around circle and this is to stop all our little bits falling out okay and then once you get to the very end you want to make sure that you've got it touching like so and then keeping the parchment down you're putting your scissors over the parchment and that will stop your scissors getting all yucky and then just cut that away and then what you can do is just push that bit in. So if I just bring that up there you can see what I've done. Okay and then when I peel off that backing that would be a nice circle of foam. Okay then all we need to do is with the rest of the backing although now I'm going to use the thicker piece here um, is just to raise up the rest of the actually let me just trim that off so it's nice and straight and then you can just run a piece along the top like so. Okay, again just cut it away using making sure your scissors are over the paper and then again take it off this very strong tape and then run I'm going to run two bits along the bottom here like so and that one Like so. 
Okay, so now we just easily make sure that's not coming over the side. No, so you just want to make sure none of your foam is coming over the edges there, and that is that bit. Now I'm going to pop all my little shaker bits in here. So I want to turn them all over like so. They won't turn back around because there's not enough room. It's not that deep, so they, they wouldn't be able to flip over. Um, but I'm going to put a few underneath as well. And they do all move around. Maybe I've got more than I need in this one, but it can be a fuller one. And That's then we fine. just need to remove the backing and here. This one here. And just grab. There we go. And it just comes around. And you can see if I just bring this up carefully how that all looks. Okay. Then you want to grab your plain other white piece. Obviously, if you want to stamp now, do so. If you want to decorate this even more, you can. And then <clears throat> I'd start, I'm lifting it up so I'm starting with this top part first and making sure that that is perfectly lined up and then once I'm happy that's in place with my finger and my thumb I can feel the bottom piece of card so I know it's all lined up because you don't want it overhanging on one side more than the other. Just make sure that's all stuck down, obviously make sure that circle's secure because you don't want your bits falling out and now you can see all the bits inside moving around. And they do, they all move really freely, which is great. And they do all kind of come over each other and stuff, but there you go. So that's just one element of it. Um, now we can do, what are the next bit? Oh, let me show you. So we also received these in the kit. And I'm gonna be completely honest, I wasn't blown away with them. They weren't really my cup of tea, just in terms of the colors, but I thought there's gotta be a way to change these. And there is, because they are brads, you can see what I've done here. And this is like iridescent, so when you move it around, it's all pearlized, it's lovely, it catches all different colors. So basically, if you just, on the back of them here, you can see the little um, split pins, just take it out and you can literally take off all the layers. So I just took off two of these bigger yellow um, ones and then I just created different. And now, look at that one. It's a lovely little yellow one. It looks almost like it's got like a sunflower look about it. You've got this one here now. So they're more for me now. I can use them more. And also you can change the middle brad. If you've got more brads like I have, I've got loads. So now I've got these and I've got a great big thing of brads here. And you can just now add any color. So because I'm using quite a, that deep, ready, pinky color, and he's painfully trying, ah, there we go, perfect. And it's got glitter in it, which is what I want because I'm gonna be adding Winker Stella um, to pretty much everything. But I can just push that through. Let me just, I might need to make the, um, yeah, I'm just gonna poke through my scissors. There you go, just make that hole a little bit bigger. And then that will just go right the way through. And it completely just transforms. Just move it around a bit there. How lovely is that? So then I'm gonna, open that up and then I'll be glue gunning this. I've oh, just like stuck that. How have I done that? This is when I've got a dodgy... <laughs> God, what the hell? It's like, it's not opening. This must be typical. The one that I want, right, well I'm not wasting it because it's just going to be glue gun. I'm just going to fold it over one way. It should split apart but it's secure. But basically now that is going to sit down the bottom here once we've got that kind of little cluster of all these little bits and pieces. So that was another little top tip. So when you get things like this, you know, take them apart, play around with them, make them work for you and you know, your style and stuff. Um, so I've got my flower, so I've told you what I've done there and what I might do is, I'm gonna show quickly as well because I think some of you will like that. Um, so I'm gonna use another one here. And I might, I'm gonna do the red because I'm gonna use two. So I'm gonna, I've only got the one there, but I'm gonna put two on this one just so it's, it's not getting wasted. So basically I've just got my Perspex block here and I've already inked it up. And I literally just got my ink and just dabbed it on top. And then I've got um, just one of these brushes here. And basically just pick up, you don't want too much water. Cause like I said, they are paper, so they will absorb it. But if I just ink it up there and literally just paint over it. It's as simple as that. And then I just blasted it with my heat gun and and then just literally doused it with the Winker Stella. And um, yeah, it's just another way to just transform things. So if you've got lots of dry flowers or particular colors, obviously if it's a really, really dark flower, then you're not gonna be able to put yellow on it. But if it's light in color, 
or if you see any in the shops and you think, oh no, they're never the colour that I like, but if they're light, buy them. And just, you know, spend an afternoon changing the colours on them. But like I said, don't go really, really heavy with the water side of it. Um, you don't need, but you do want to dilute it down a little bit because it just, it just means you can cover it much, much quicker. Um, yeah, so that is how you do that. So again, another, hopefully, another good little tip Okay, so that's now all coloured. So again, if I just bring that up, there we go, you can see it better now. You would never have thought that that was one of those purple flowers. So I'm just going to give that a quick blast. Okay, okay and I've just got my Wink of Stella here. And literally, oh gosh, I cover that too much. Just literally go over it. Again, your brush may pick up some of the colour, but I did just uh, go through and... Um, dry this off so it should be okay but these uh, clear ones do sometimes pick up some of the pigment but it just brings a really nice can you see it catching the light there it's just got a lovely little shimmer to it now so there you go so that's how you can change your paper flowers now let me just get rid of this messy messy stuff right where were we so let's cut off this metal here so i'm just grabbing my old scissors just removing like so. So I've got my two little flowers ready. Um, I've got the flower ready, which I've showed you. Then I just stamped this little chick, which is the chick in this stamp here. So I just stamped the whole thing and then I just cut him out separately. I just liked it. And I've done it again in that same color. Um, so now we need to do the egg. So the egg is done by using um, some embossing powder so you will have received if you received last month's kit which was the February kit you got the Champers Wow embossing powder and I did say I think it was either last week's project um, that you can use that if you've got white use white um, but that one will work as well um, so I've just got some of my um, embossing powder here and just going to rub my anti-static powder over and then I'm using the Easter egg stamp which also came in the kit and that is this little one here okay so it had the cheap cheap attached to it I just cut it but it's that one that we're using it's just a really nice Easter egg so I'm just going to ink that up stamp that down there Okay, that is, yep, yeah. just made, just done it there. And then I'm going to scrap my paper here and then just rub this. It's like a creamy powder, this one is. Didn't quite all go in, but most of it is. But there you go, you can see that egg, there you go. It's now covered with the powder. So right, let me just. Okay, and then I'm just going to heat okay, set that. Okay, so there you go, you can see now that that's all set. And now we're going to colour it in exactly the same way that I did with my um, little doily kind of hanging decoration that i done. Um, so it's exactly the same um, way. So I've just got that, again, that same block. I'm just going to grab my ink, just ink up some more on my block there. There we go. Nice and vibrant. And again, you don't want to go too heavy with the water. I mean, it's not really going to matter if this warps because you can just run it through your dye machine and we're going to fussy cut it. It's quite a small piece. Um, but I'm just, again, putting my brush in there. And when you rub the brush over, it will resist against the embossing um, powder. So you will just see the, um, the white coming through and you'll get a really nice egg. So exactly the same, I just used the yellow last time, which came in this kit, so a really nice dandelion ye uh, yellow. Um, but I used it last time, so I wanted to do some different colours this time. Um, you can see there, I'm just going straight over, and you can see how that embossing powder lifts up through. And then what we can do when it's dry is you just rub over it with a, a very, very slightly damp piece of tissue. Um, and it will just wipe away. To be honest, I don't think I'll need to, because I think this is all just coming off itself. Now if you want to go over a bit darker, just pick up more of that colour, but I'm going to be rubbing over some Winkastella again. I said I coated this card in Winkastella. Um, 
But again, it's just ways to make this kit go a lot further. You can do so many things with the product in it. So, um, and make your product projects match as well. I mean, you know, that was the paper in the packs, you know, and I've just picked out a colour that I had. And I've, this is the same colour here from the paper, this bit here, which we'll be doing. So, like I said, just really kind of start to think out of the box and other ways that you can use your bits and pieces. But now if I just bring that up, you can see where it's resisted against the um, embossing powder. And you've got a really cool image. So now I'm going to fussy cut that one out. So I've just got my snips here. Cut away all this bulky card. And then just go around neatly. And I'm just... I mean, it's already got a white border from the edge of the um, the egg stamp, so I'm kind of just following that really. And uh, yeah, just get that colour. Okay, so just quickly heat set that a bit more just to dry off any of that. Oh, what's that just left from my? Uh... Oh, I'm going to go over that again. That was a bit of a uh, annoyance. Obviously, got something on my tweezers. In fact, it's going to stay there now, isn't it? It's not even going to budge. Oh well, we'll have to cover it with something. Oh, I can cover it with the other flower. Right, so that's that done. And then we just need the, again, my Winter Stella. So you can see I've got a little bit of pink on there, so I need to clean that off. And literally I just covered, coloured in all of the little circles on the stamp. And again, I don't know how well this is picking up in the camera. I'll show you in a right. second. Again, give that time to dry a bit. If I just bring that up, can you see how it's catching the light there now? It's so sparkly. So there you go, really cool little um, detail. Then I need to do my so sentiments. This. A little um, stamp, which is from this stamp set here by Lindsay Mason Designs. And just get this one, take it off there. So again, I'm going to stamp this with the same colour that I've used for everything else. Um, again, make sure that's straight, it's got a bit wonky. Okay. And then I've just got a tiny little rectangle die here. Obviously you can cut it out by hand. Just trim off some of that there. Grab my plates. And then we've got our nice little image. And then I'm going to stick it onto here, anywhere. And then I'm going to freehand, I'm going to cut around that. So I'm just going to use some of my red tape here and then I'll mount the final piece on um, some foam just to lift it, that's what I've done there, it's just kind of lifted it off. So again, just stick that, it doesn't have to be dead straight, because now we're going to cut it, I'm going to use my big scissors so I can get one nice cut and just follow that white line like so. Again, it's just to let that sentiment kind of pop and be seen, like so. Okay, so there you go, I've got a nice little sentiment now. So now we just need to start assembling it all, which I always find is the fun bit. So, and I always like to prepare everything because then I can play around and decide whether I'm happy with it being there, because already now I want to cover up that horrible little mark. Um, so let me grab, I'm going to snip off a little bit of this tape to put my sentiment on. So that can go so on got my literally right above that circle and just in the middle, like so. Okay. Um, and then start playing around with where we want this. I think I'm going to have one flower there, yeah, to cover that up. And then the others can be the same as before. So it's going to kind of be like that. Isn't that sweet? So I've got my hot gun on because this is obviously this plastic and I want to make sure it's going to stick really securely. So that one is going to be just kind of sitting just over the plastic there. Then this one, I'm just going to use the hot glue. That one is just going to sit there. Like so. Um, these ones have got some foam on the back, so I'm just going to use some little squares. Okay, and now we just need to hole punch up here. So just 
just make sure it's in the centre and just punch it through like so and then I've just got this similar pinky ribbon here and I'm just going to thread that through loop it through and then just trim off the dots and there you have it push all my mess out of the way <laughs> There is my gift tag and I think they are so cute. Let me just bring it up a little bit closer there so you can see what I've done. So we've got two cute little roses here that have been dyed. Fussy cut little chicken. This heat um, embossed egg with more glitter. Kind of a DIY flower there. All these little die cuts. Nice sentiment and then a homemade tag which is a shaker tag. So yeah, that's my loaded um, tags and I'm really really pleased with them so they're going to look lovely now on the gift bags so yeah hope you've enjoyed this um, hobby base kit uh, tutorial if you are interested in subscribing or just knowing more about the hobby base monthly kits um, all the links are shared below and um, I'll also um, add on to this video more of the projects that I've done and the unboxing um, video as well just so you can get an idea of what kind of comes um, from month to month. It's always a complete surprise, we never know what's coming in them which I like and as I've said before in tutorials it kind of forces you to maybe use things that you wouldn't and I like that I can kind of really kind of work out different ways to use things to make them suit my style and work for me really so yeah so I hope you've enjoyed it please give me a thumbs up if you have and subscribe to my channel to see more. Thanks for watching, bye! Thank you.